You're on. Good morning, Hickory Sunrise. Good morning, Good morning sir. sir. Pledge of allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Whose turn is it for the end? Thank you. Good morning, Lord. Thank yes. you for your grace and mercy. We, you are truly majestic. We thank you for the gift of sleep which rejuvenates us to be able to do your will. Please forgive us for our lack of sincerity in all that we do. Increase our desire to do your will as we rotate to discuss how we can be of benefit not only to our local community but also to the world. We ask your blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Good morning, Rotarians. Good, Good morning, morning, Mr. Honeycutt. Hope okay, everybody is fine this morning. Uh, be sure you've got your badge on this morning. I want to see badges. Okay, you're great, Scott. Uh, Mr. Steiger, you got to cover. All right. Austin. Yes, sir. All right, here you go. I just wanted to see how it works. You were there. Okay. All right. I didn't realize it was a test. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you can't throw her alert in your arm. Give me the wrong yes. one. Yeah, give me Scott. That was a good one. That was a good one. Good deal. All right. First of all, last week, Richard Tucker, yeah. we mentioned your name. And again, we talked about the food and the food for Jake. And the verification you brought Jake to our house. Yeah, I did. To show that he wasn't undernourished. And he's being fed. So, as a reminder, please put your dog in there for Jake. So he's got to be fed. All right. Once a day. Let me go ahead and give you my reaction. Question. Sir. All right. As a former superintendent, yesterday we had sun out, everything, and no ice. How does it, how does it feel to make a decision? No school and nothing happens. Um, I, that did happen to me once, to be honest with you. Um, generally, just so you know, uh, in this area, uh, when I was superintendent, three superintendents would call each other, uh, three or four o'clock in the morning, whatever, because <laughs> weather would come in right about 5.30, 6 o'clock, and the buses were turned on at 6. And if you could make a call before the buses were turned on, that's what you would want to do. And uh, most of the time, most of the time, the stuff was already falling, or that we knew there was black ice or something, uh, like that, uh, but if you're asking about Monday's call, <laughs> I don't have a clue. Um, yesterday, yeah. when I got up, there was it was valid. It was valid. Yeah. 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 So yeah. The, the, the delay yesterday was was a good call, but um, not sure. Just glad you're not superintendent, not making that decision. Yeah. There's feedback both ways, but you get more feedback. Oh, uh, this is the toughest. Call for a superintendent of all things is the, is the, a school closing. <laughs> yes, doesn't matter students, parents, PTAs, whatever. School closing. That's that's the big deal. We had a superintendent that the weather forecast was imminent. Okay, they put uh, stove plows on the Interstate 40, had them lined up. So he called the school off, and probably within about 45 minutes, the sun came out. <laughs> but in Burke County. You have one part of the county, Hillary, under that section, no problem. You get up to Lake James yeah. and all the yeah. you've got snow. All right, Kim, I need one dollar yes. from you. Ooh. Only a dollar? Right now, one dollar. <laughs> okay, what? Well, I will get your money. Is this a magic trick? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Four others are coming. Is this a magic okay. trick? You're going to make it. Yeah, he wants to see what you have on your wallet before yeah, you start. Really. All right. All this weather that we've had coming out of Canada. Yeah. Yes. yeah. We are guilty of this right here. Ah, uh, yes. You, yes. That yes. was tough. But in Canada, when it snows less than two feet, we still go to school. <laughs> <laughs> I know. We used to by whatever vehicle, by, what, by walking, by muck locks, by <laughs> snowshoes, <laughs> whatever you got, I go to school. And when I first moved down here and it snowed six inches, um, I went to work at Comscope. I was working at Comscope at the time. I was the only one in the parking lot. I couldn't believe it. I thought, what is it, Saturday? I couldn't, I, you know. So, yeah, we, we have a different attitude towards no, snow, ice, yeah. and... But it, the weather, you know... If but I understand is, the ice issue. If this is sure. typical weather, that we had cold weather, and typical from Canada coming down... Well, you, we, we didn't get the Canadian weather. 
uh, I phoned up there in around Christmas, and uh, my brother said it was minus 30, and then with wind, it was minus 50 something. So yeah, we were pretty lucky. Oh yeah. Wow. Yeah. You better believe. It. I'll tell you a war story, brother. In in Fort Wayne, we started that plant for B.F. Goodrich and brought folks in from everywhere. We had brought a fellow in from uh, Oklahoma to be a shop foreman. He had a VW. And he was so afraid of it freezing up, we had two or three feet of snow. He had three five-gallon cans of gas in his car, and he'd run out at break time and at lunch time and put more gas in his car and leave it running the whole time he was at work. <laughs> One day his car didn't uh, keep running, and they said, John, what are you going to do? I said, I'm going to start it. He said, it's in a pile of snow three feet deep. How are you going to do that? He said, don't worry about it. And he went into the maintenance shop, got a big hunk of rope, went out, jacked up his car, wrapped it around the rear wheel, and pull started his VW. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like a lawnmower. Like a lawnmower. Good. Good. All right, one other question. This is yeah. sort of a memory test this morning. Gavin. Uh-oh. All right. The new Rotarian magazine came out. You got yours, I know. When did it come out? Oh, no, it was this past week. A week and a half ago. No, I haven't seen that one. All right. It's awful pretty. Do you have anything? I know you've read it. Any, anything in that magazine? I'm not quite sure how I would have read it since I haven't got it, but my psychic powers might help me here. I don't know. Well, the question that I had, Reinhardt already blew it. I was going to ask you what was the color on the front. You know, white. It's a really tough question. Now, can you tell me the color on the front page? White. White. All right. We'll accept white, that. Right. Bob, I need one dollar from you. Ooh. <laughs> Not a problem. All right. Rick is ready too. That's great. All right. Rick is laying right in front of me. All right. That's it. Thank you. All right. Uh, there's one thing that the. Uh, Master of Ceremonies missed this morning. I think that we ought to reverse the charges because that's his job. It might be. Yeah. Kenny missed the soup kitchen duties on Friday. We'll see who came out in the bulletin. I'm assuming everybody read that. Is that oh. correct? But there was no, no fines levied. Wait a minute. This is se second Friday's coming up. No, last Friday. Last, last, Friday. last Friday. Last Friday, second Friday? Uh, no, last so, month. December. Yeah, December. Party of last month. There was two of us so, that were supposed to go. Who was I, the other I person? I missed two meetings. You, know, you, know, you, you should have known that. All right. yeah. So we, I didn't correct. See, who was it? Correct. Okay. Yes, I know you were in Paris, but, but it doesn't matter. Did, you go? did I go for what? To the kitchen. I'm not answering that question. <laughs> from, from what I understand, though, it, being a, yeah, since it's Christmas sure time, we have more than enough to show All right. We will, yeah. we will stay closer on that. But uh, I do have to apologize for that. And, I, and Kenny said it ought to be worth five, so I'm putting I, in five. Man. You put in five for me? Yeah. So speaking of also, being how you spent 600, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks. Speaking of the soup kitchen. Yes, pass that five before he tries to get it back. That's James Wayne. That's Jake's money. <laughs> <laughs> you want Jake's money? You know, is that Jake's money? You know what Jake would break your arm, do Was that a fine or was it Jake's money? I'm not going to answer that question either. <laughs> I'll let Richard. He's an honest Yeah, he's right here. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Don't, Don't book him. Don't pull out your wallet. Poor dog. I don't want to be truthful. <laughs> so speaking of soup kitchen, who's on? Because it's coming up yes. in three days. We have two. Walter and, uh, and Reinhardt. We already answered that. I guess. I guess. Uh, do I owe another dollar? Yes, I guess I didn't notice that. Ron Leach sent it out, and also <coughs> that there be no bulletin, but also identified soup dishes. Is that correct? Okay. All right. Good deal. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Thank you. Another dollar. Gavin, I'll, I'll, I'll save sure. any other questions next week for you. Okay. Sure. Okay, sure. I'll know not to comment. <laughs> so, uh, today's club assembly, so it's time to talk about lots of stuff. And uh, we know, I know that we have coming up imminently the, um, the, the soup and clothes and such winter thing at Richard's church. So, Richard, take it away. Thank you. 27th of January is a Saturday. Uh, probably most of us will meet at the church at 9 o'clock, which is Cross Lutheran Church. 
uh, I, I will send out a, an email to see who all is going to make it there. I'm assuming everybody can make it. And if you, when you come, I need you to bring at least a crock pot of soup. Any kind of soup. Doesn't matter what kind it is. Just bring a pot of soup. Or, in Bob's case, two pots of soup. <laughs> Why is that? Because he brought a big old thing one time. <clears throat> but, and then what we'll do is 9 o'clock we'll start making the sandwiches. Ron's going to get the bread for us. And, uh, and I'll get the, I mean, G will get the uh, meat and the cheese and the peanut butter and the jellies. And, and we'll make those sandwiches uh, with the chips. Uh, and we'll get the canned goods, which we put in bags for each family to have, which we're figuring to make maybe at least 150 bags. Uh, also, most kind enough to bring some. So you this have is the money you collect here. This is the money you collect here. This, this is what this money does. That's right. This money right here buys the buys the, <coughs> meat, uh, the cheese and peanut butter and all the canned goods and the um, and the throws, which we've got some throws. Uh, so that's what this money buys. And and so, getting back to what I said, is. I did get the toiletries from Austin. He uh, donated some toiletries. Our church is going to put those in the bags, in, in some Ziploc bags. Some of them are already in bags, and so that's a good thing. Uh, we might need some paper grocery bags, but we'll take care of that. Uh, and we have throws. I, I checked on some socks yesterday. The, the place was closed, but I've got to go back in the next couple of days to get a, some socks for both men and women and children that we give away. Some people I'd like for help maybe with uh, giving away some socks or giving away some throws. Uh, some of the church members are going to be there to help with that too. Our youth, youth group is helping. The education board is helping. The evangelism board is helping. Uh, so in a lot of preparatory work that's going to happen before then is the Sunday before. And a lot of our church members are going to start putting some of that stuff together. The main thing that I need the Rotary Club to do, the main thing I do is, is make sure you bring your suit. Make sure you come, if, if not all of us come, to help. It's are we going to wear our out. Rotarian shirts, or how are we going to identify? It don't matter. It don't matter. Okay. It don't matter. How, how does this get out to the, uh, the people that need this? How do you approach oh, this? Okay, this particular, this particular Saturday is the Feed the Needy for Cross Lutheran Church. That's when everybody comes to our church. It's the fourth Saturday of the month. So they're all coming to our church. In addition to that, there'll be some extra people coming. Uh, so there'll be, there'll be 150, 200, 220, yeah, 250 people coming. There's going to be a lot, and we're going to need a lot of help, and we're going to need a lot of cleanup. Doors, doors open from when to when for clients? Nine o'clock is when I asked it. No, for, for, come for in. the eleven thirty is when they generally start serving. Is eleven thirty, and then clean up maybe somewhere around about, or may I think we could probably leave maybe about two, something like that. Just depends on how we get it cleaned up. Uh, we got to get chips. I got to get the money from G to get the chips and all that kind of stuff. So, what I really need everybody to do is bring your soup, and then we'll have tables. We'll have some places to hook it up and keep it warm. Uh, and if you don't need it warm, if it's good and hot, then then we'll just set it out on the tables. And we need people to serve. Uh, and that's pretty much the winter warmth for the neighborhood, for those that need the food, for those that need the canned foods. The toiletries, the throws, the socks, some hats. Well, I think there probably going to be some hats there. Uh, so that's that's our winter warmth, 27th of January. So Dude, please, all of you, be there. Is that church yeah. going to have security there? I got to work on that. That that was a that was a good point about security, and I'll see if I can get that done. That sounds like a larger number than we've seen in previous years. Is that because we're in a combination of? Yes. Yeah. With feed the needy. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. So. So we'll need. Depends on the time of month too. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Beginning of the month, of course, it's less. It's the last Saturday before Social Security or food stamps or any of that stuff will be yeah. coming in. So people will be at their uh, the bottom. You know. Can I? And this is a little different time of the year. We did it before, a little bit before Christmas. We right? did it. Just, usually in December we did. This time it, it happened to be just in January, which is I, I think a good thing. I think a good thing. Too. With all this cold that went on over Christmas, where, what percentage of those people are actually homeless and with, you know, no place to stay, or where did they go? What well, the Salvation Army's full, so they got 80 or so, women and children, men. And then uh, 
Um, that's really the only emergency shelter. So you got those folks. And you probably got another five maybe in Hickory City. It's hard to count, of course, because homeless folks are transient. So might be in Hickory this week, might be in Statesville next week, might be in Winston, might you know. So so it just depends. Plus people get car incarcerated sometimes. Is, is Roger up and running now or not? No, I don't know. I haven't seen him, Roger. No, yet. Not, seen him. not to the extent he used to. We have two day shelters, though. Um, we have six churches that are that are in the mix, uh, CCM, Soup Kitchen. Sally's open. The only time they're not open is from 9 to 3, so it's during the day. Um, I did hear Joe told me somebody was frostbit. Yeah, we had the warming station. Rick was there. Um, I heard somebody had frostbite on their face. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we, we had, I think, 28 show up Sunday night. Yeah. We, had Phil, Phil we, had, had we had 28 or 29 at first press Monday yeah. night. Yeah. One of my concerns, just being new in the community, is is what about those folks who fall through the cracks and are not a salvation army? Oh, yeah. And, yeah. and I was hard to say about that, that this is something I'd like to have more conversation in the next year to see about. Awesome. I see our new chair of mm -hmm. the warming station mm -hmm. committee right here. <laughs> <laughs> but just, but, but, but I, I, I do think. <coughs> They won't go back to the Sally, yeah. you know, and it's not any, any, it's not, the Salvation Army we can't do without, them. and yeah. they do a great job, right. Right. Oh, yeah. uh, but folks who, who have a touch of mental illness or who last week had a fight with some dude over a dollar, you know, they, they just, for whatever reason, mm -hmm. you know, they just don't want to be there, and and, um, and they're still out in it, and, and again, I mean, it's hard to, at the end of the night, when you drive back and you only have 15 or 20, to know that 10, 10 chose to go back to their 10 anyway. Mm -hmm. so do we know where those 10s are? Uh, oh, yeah. that, well, some people do, but, right, but right. at that point they move to, and people don't clump up together um, most of the time uh, because that attracts code enforcement, that attracts right. trouble. Um, so a lot of people won't tell you where their camp is or where no, they're, yeah. they're camping. And, um, if, if, if the property owner is okay with it and in. you're not causing any trouble, Usually, there's no trouble. I mean, there's no trouble. It's it's when elements come in, and frankly, it's usually when an element comes in that's not from here, originally, um, and, and trouble begins. You know, and that usually involves some kind of substance. And, it, and on that particular Saturday too, please be flexible in terms of where you can be able to help. Some people do serve. Some people do get behind tables and help with uh, handing out stuff. And, and help sometimes a little bit, I don't mean security, but, but just, just watching out. Yeah, because the way it flows, they come in one door and they go out the next, and then you have some that maybe don't want to go out the door. They might want to come back and try to do it again. Um, so that's where you have to be very careful. The food part, I mean, they can eat all they want, but to get all the other stuff, they need to just come from one time. Would, will you be assigning, like when we get there, if we say, Richard, how can I be of use? I, I can't. Okay. I, I can do it so much. I can't. Okay. Uh, because I'll need to find out, you know, from our church who's going to be there okay. to help too. Because I want them to be able to help and our youth to help too. So uh, so anyway, it, it's it's beginning to get organized and uh, uh, so I do need all your help. You have someone at the door that checks them in. There was. Yeah, they pretty much know the group that's coming through. They yeah. Feet. yeah, yeah. We let only so many come through, and they let they eat, and then they go through, and then we let some more. Uh, but we don't. If it's cold, we try to let as much in as we can. That's that's pretty much what it was. Any questions? There are two separate. Going to be two separate passages. Into the building is one that'll get you food and whatever. And there should be a separate passage up into the takeaways. Should be right. Yeah, uh, I think I seem to remember uh, last time that there was a, a need for uh, more prong outlets. <laughs> Somehow I seem to remember that one kicking off or some kicking off or something. Is that something we can do about that? Not really. Not really. I mean, it is what it is. Uh, it doesn't been changed, so there's not much we can do. We'll, we'll just we'll, 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 we can make it work, and that's what we we'll do. But thank you, Donald. I remember that. That's that's on the winter one. Okay. Can I go from there to the Please face do. of a child? Yep. Face of a child program. I, I did find out that yes, indeed, face of a child program is going to happen. It, it's it's. Uh, I talked to Florine, who is the head of the Little Samaritan Mission. Uh, I think somebody from our church, Patricia, had talked to Maria, who was the one that was sort of heading that face of a child program. 
the real question was is were they going to have it and and so the answer is yes they are but it's going to be a little bit later than it was last year because last year this time we already had pictures well they're, they're, they're having some problems with those and the logistics of that. Uh, so, but they are going to have it, and so it'll be coming out. So I'll keep you abreast of that as soon as I can. As soon as I get the pictures, I'll get a picture for everybody that's in our club, to, and, and I'll give you a copy of what it is they need to. What will we have to do as far as clothing? Or Don't know what that is yet. See, that'll, that'll come, and, um, and I won't know what that is. Can you explain to Joe what we're talking about? Yes, I will. You know, Face of a Child is a program that developed out of the uh, what's called the Little Samaritan Mission, which is uh, headquarters in Grand Falls. It's, uh, it's, it's an organization that, that helps orphans in the country of Moldova, which is over by the Ukraine. Uh, we, we got involved in it, Glenn and I, Bob got involved in it years ago with Florine who was in charge of that and, and we've we've taken several trips over there and, and back. And they're all Moldovans, right? Sure. The, Moldovans, yeah. That run the the you started the you started the mission. Yeah. And and so in a nutshell what it is is when we visited all those orphanages, they they're they're uh, they didn't have very much. I mean they were pretty poor. And so what the Little Samaritans started doing this mission was to take pictures of all the children in the orphanages and bring those pictures back to the United States. And organizations like Rotary, a lot of churches, mostly churches, will take a number of pictures, 20, 30, 40 pictures, boys, girls, from infants to 16 years old, 17 years old. And and on the back of the picture, it tells their name. It tells what orphanage number they're coming from. It tells their shoe size, and it tells uh, shoe size. Pants and shirts. No, it don't tell. Age, don't say age, 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 age. That's it. Age, age and age shoe, shoe size. Shoe size. And so right. what they do then is they give you a list of what to put in, in whether it's a backpack or whether it's a bag, plastic bag, big Ziploc plastic bag. And so what you do is you go to stores and you gather all that stuff and you put it in those bags. And you zip it up and you bring it to Rotary Club here. We'll have a certain time to bring it here, like maybe this morning, and everybody will bring it back here this morning. <coughs> full. Oh, I always want to mention full. <laughs> and, uh, and then we, we put it in a truck and I take it to Granite Falls where the Little Samaritan Mission headquarters is. And they in turn put them in cardboard boxes that is designated for that particular orphanages. And then they take those cardboard boxes and put it in containers that is shipped over to the port of Odessa in the Ukraine. And then they pick it up from there and take it to the orphanages and, and then hand out those bags. And, and that's a part of what our Rotary Club does, the collection of what needs to be done. And in some cases, we even went and helped put the, the the little bags in the big boxes. I don't think we've ever put the big boxes in the containers yet, although I have, and maybe Glenn has, and uh, I don't know if Bob has or not, but he may, probably has. And then we had the opportunity to go to Moldova, which is the capital of Kishinev, and, uh, and go to those orphanages and hand out those bags to those, those people, and they, and they have a picture on it, so you, you literally hand them out to them. And in a lot of cases, like in I think in Bob's and I case, we, we got to go back to their classrooms and, and they would open up their bags and, and see what they've got, you know, they check it all out. And so that's what Face of a Child program is all about. One thing, Richard, there's $10 that we add to this, is that correct? 12, I think. 12, now. 12, 12. There's $12 that we put in there. And, and what they do is, and I've got to mention this, is when they go to the orphanages, they, they usually have a meal for them, which is, which they usually then get a meat. Usually they don't get meat, but then they get a meat. And sometimes it's a little bit in chicken leg, but it's just something small. But and then one time we even handed out oranges. Didn't yeah, we? yeah, yeah. We handed out oranges too. Yeah. I mean, they were so thrilled yeah. to get an orange. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And so anyway, so that's what the Facebook Child Program is all about. And we've been doing it since the onset of our club, starting in 2000. We've been doing it every year.
and it usually by this time we're usually collecting our bags by now but I think they're having some logistic problems <clears throat> in Moldova where some of the orphanages that house the children because they're there because the parents can't afford them and they give them away or for whatever reason some of those state-run orphanages are closed and they took all the kids and they pushed them out into the villages and they would say here you, you got a kid, you got a kid. And so now what they do is sometimes not only do they take pictures of orphans' kids, they take pictures of sometimes kids in villages. And so that's that's what's happened. So that's how that's how we got involved. Pretty rough conditions, isn't it? It, it, it was real rough conditions. Yeah. yeah. To, so. say, to say the least. Yeah. So that's, that's what the face of child's all about. The heavy coats we've been wearing this last week or so, all of us, they wear in the classroom so that they can study because they don't have heat in their classrooms until lunchtime. And then they burn a few sticks in a, in a ceramic stove in the room while they eat. They even, some places that we stay, they even have the wood stove is under the bed. And the mattress mm -hmm. is up on top, yeah. of the, up on top of the stove. And then they're, they're really sort of, they're pretty smart because they take their stove and they take the exhaust and they run it through the walls. The exhaust goes through the walls before it goes out and it heats the wall up. Yeah. And so you can lean against the wall. That's what we did sometimes, just lean against <laughs> the wall uh, to stay warm. And, warm. and they and they burn corn cobs, uh, coal. Sometimes our club has even pitched in and bought some so, tons of coal uh, yeah. for some of those portions. Potatoes, I think we bought them. Potatoes one time, yeah. we did, we did. So that's what that's all about. And it's sort of an international kind of thing for us. Not many people realize Lord and the devil have been fighting over that land since, since the time of Christ. And uh, the soil in that area is the, some of the most fertile soil in the world. And they have, except for about 10 or 12 hectares in the middle of, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the state are some trees, but everywhere you go, there are no trees. Uh, they've all been torn down and burned for food. And uh, one of the crops that is a, a commercial crop there is wine, vines for grapes, mm -hmm. and they're guarded by concertino wire to keep the people from coming in and clipping the vines to burn them. But I'm done. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Um, dance. Let's talk about the dance. Um, <clears throat> well, the posters are out. It's uh, Saturday, March 17th, same time, 7 to 11. It is Blackwater Rhythm and Blues. They're uh, an up-and-coming beach band, uh, fastly approaching uh, the top. Uh, first for, for us, and uh, they're a big presence. There's eight or ten of them. Uh, we'll see what happens. I've got some uh, tickets pre-sold. I've been uh, working this for about 30 days now, and uh, hopefully, we'll. Uh, the, the key, the key to making this dance a success is that we sell advertising, and we, we beat this horse every time. We Richard has exhausted every possible avenue with his four or five thousand dollars or whatever he sold last time. Um, so we're really going to have to kick in if everybody will sell two or three hundred dollars worth. Will <clears throat> we'll be in good shape, but again, it, it, it always takes about $9,000 start to finish to put on a dance, and uh, hopefully we'll have some money left over at the end. Any, and anything I can do, or Robert Miguel, Robert just switched jobs, so I don't know. I talked to him one day, he sounded like he was in Conover, and I woke him up, he was in Amsterdam. Really? So... <laughs> Yeah. yeah. So, um, bad drugs. Bad drugs. <laughs> <laughs> I miss your exit. Why did you call Nova? I, I mean, yeah, it, it, yeah, it right. easily yeah. happens. Are we committing East Frontierian to anything like we did? Well, we need to talk about that because, it, you know, really, in all honesty, I mean, I, I break down every time we do a dance, and, and guys, we gotta, I mean, it's just we keep doing less and less and less each time we put on a dance, so maybe we need to talk about. We've committed to this dance, but we haven't committed to the October dance, which we should have done by now. 
and I didn't specifically because I don't know if there's enough interest in the club to keep moving forward. Dude. Well, I can address that from people with whom I've spoken. <clears throat> Everybody with whom I've spoken loves the Halloween dance. Okay. want to keep that. It's the spring dance that's up in the air. Do we do two dances? If we only did one, um, and all, I can't speak for everybody in here, but I know that I prefer the, the Halloween if we could only do one <coughs> sure. because it's already established and people are beginning to look forward to it. We've heard a lot of people who at the last one say, can't wait for the next one. Um, and so that I think a lot of discussion should be, or could be rather, um, what is our second fundraiser going to be? Uh, continue with the dance or do something else, golf tournament, whatever. I've talked at uh, great length with John Duke at Market Domain, by the way, who's doing our food again. I think he did a marvelous job for no more than he charged the last yeah. time. And he said, why don't we we do, um, he's still interested in joining the club for whatever reason. I thought we did a good job of running him off last time. But, um, he said, why don't we do a jazz night and do it at Market on Main? I mean, you can only put about 200, 225 people in the building. Can have one area where the band is set up and one area for dancing and then the other rooms are kind of scattered throughout the building but it works he's not going to charge us for the use of the building as long as he gets his food we wouldn't get any of the food but he would get the food and he'd open up a buffet line and it'd be per person but it'd be a night of entertainment and dancing with jazz so that's something to talk about moving forward but this one um have we got any giveaways or anything like that? I mean, are we doing anything like it's it's uh, St. Patrick's Day, right? St. Patrick's Correct. Day. So yes. you usually have green beer. You have yeah. maybe some Guinness. Can we? Will they let us get the uh, some of the um, beer suppliers to supply some Guinness and stuff? Or we can this, ask the yeah. Riot's Mill for that. Sure. And then someone suggested a traditional meal, uh, which was what is a traditional meal? Okay. Yeah, I mean, Corned beef. Uh, corned beef. Well, corned beef and there's, there's the American version of a traditional Irish meal, which is corned beef and cabbage. Yeah, so maybe we could do that. I've never known an Irish night. person. I don't know, that might <laughs> not attract a lot of people. <laughs> corned uh, beef and hash and barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> you Probably we ought to have the potatoes. Potatoes. <laughs> soda bread. There's a lot of things yeah, we can do. I sure hope we don't ever go backwards and go back to citrus sales or no, roses or selling steak knives or. You know, or whatever. Flowers. Flowers, <laughs> yeah, we've been there. Yeah. Well, I don't think you should mistake the fact that, uh, that the work does seem to keep on descending on the same group of people with a, a lack of interest. Um, I, agree with that. I, I think, or, or, or we shouldn't beat ourselves up about these dances are fantastic successes. I mean, both of them are. If you Even one that doesn't work very well, we'd have a really hard time doing a fundraiser, which did as well, and we'd be delighted with it. Um, so I don't think that we should get negative about it. Um, I, I, think, I think they're great. And that's, as somebody who doesn't particularly enjoy them, by the way, I'm not really into this stuff. But, sure. But as a fundraiser, it's fantastic, um, both of them. Can you rent fountains, you know, portable fountains, and have them? We die and it have it spray it up green. You could do that, sure, from the from the uh, from the rental place. I'm sure they have those fountains. Absolutely. With a punch in there, you mean? Just well, or anything. Um, yeah, you could make a green punch. You could you could do something like that. Yeah. yeah. Again, yeah. all that costs yeah. money. I'm not. I haven't asked the band if they want to stay, and I'm not going to ask because it wasn't in their contract. So they can stay on the floor. It's a thousand dollars to our benefit. Think we should have a fist fight middle? That'll work. <laughs> yeah. That was an Irish thing, so this yeah. is. <laughs> uh, Gavin for a night yeah. out with Gavin. Yeah. yeah. Out with Gavin. There you go. Although That's Gavin. Right. It's, it's a step up from Irish. So. <laughs> <laughs> Although sure. Gavin corrected us last time Wayne said that. Wayne's got a good idea that we ought to bring the bagpipes in. And let, him, let him play from one end to the other and walk out the other door or whatever he's going to do. And that would be great. Yeah, yeah I, I think it's a good idea. Again, I like corned beef and cabbage. It would work in America, it wouldn't work in Ireland, but it would work here. Uh, <laughs> well, so I think it's a great idea. So what please, would, I what mean, would be an Irish meal? Um, soda bread. Uh, well, it, it, if you're looking for traditional stuff, yes, yeah, soda bread. Um, yeah, it's, it's, the, uh, they do eat, um, uh, the cabbage is, is real. It's the corned beef that's kind of weird. And they have other things like, my wife calls it mush, which is, we had a similar thing in Scotland called stovies, which is basically a 
potato dish, but it's done with ham and onions and, mm. and um, shepherd pie. It's like our potato? No, it's, it's like mash, mm. but all this is, is in there. You have, a lot of them derive from days when people didn't have much, uh, you know, of anything. So they tend to be out of basic ingredients. Nowadays, of course, you can eat all kinds of swanky stuff in great restaurants. But I think if we get into food, we don't have an issue. Yeah. Irish. Yeah, because that is an issue with a lot of people. What's on the menu oh, this time? Okay. I mean, can we have Irish beer or Guinness? Yeah, I'll ask. Or can case. we have a distributor that's special promotion for that night? We have Irish Guinness, and we're promoting it. And they usually have people like too, yeah, like with it. the uh, lit, lit up uh, green. I don't. Yes. I've seen that with the beer distributors. I will ask the Moretz Yeah, at that point, we're waiting on Moretz Co. Yeah, but we don't. Okay. You know, if everybody would bring two hundred dollars to the table, an advertisement or just a donation to the dance, that would be great. That, that's just that's another couple of thousand dollars towards the event. Uh, Robert is working on uh, corning. Is it Comsco or corning? Comscope. Comscope for another three thousand uh, dollars. The Tar Heel Wealth Management is already committed to three thousand, and oh gosh, I mean they they've already they they've got to be into these dances for at least twenty grand. Yeah, it's it's done. Oh, oh, yeah, it's it's, it's yeah. incredible. So, so uh, all right, so Rick's got tickets. I have three hundred tickets, and I'll put together a spreadsheet. I have them numbered. So when you want tickets, I will give you and I'll record which ones you have. You sell what you can, if you can't sell, just return them so I can keep an accurate record of all the tickets and, and, and the money as well. So well, the phone number on the bottom of this poster is my phone number uh, and I can accept the credit cards so at, the, uh, at the shop. We just take the hit on the whatever it costs. It's it's call any any hour, uh, uh, you can call any hour of the day because usually be poor on any hour of the day. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to ask Kenny to send me a digital yes. poster so I can send it out to people. You want me to just tell him to send it to everybody? That's good. That'd be great. Because then you That'd send it to your friends and neighbors. Yes, I'm going to hit the radio station in Gastonia. Kath is, she's going to probably ask me for four giveaways. I'll do that. It's worth the advertising because it goes to the Shag community. I've already hit Junk and Oldies, which is another mm -hmm. one. I popped them this morning and asked them if they would send our, our poster out to the community. One thing, one thing I do is I take a ticket and I scan it, and then I send, I use it as an attachment to all my uh, distribution list, listservs, so that people can see, you know, all the information's right sure. there, and they can respond to you directly. Then. Every Thursday night in Hickory at McCroskey's on 29th Avenue is Shag Night. Uh, we've been attending regularly for months now. I will take this over there and possibly get them. That's a good idea. To help us. Because there's usually, it's built now to about 75 people that show up every Thursday night. Uh, and usually by 9, 9.15 at night, the crowd's gone. So it's an earlier crowd. It's during the week. But it's it's a good way to get out. And uh, uh, it could go on and on and on. So, but Lake Hickory still wants to talk about us doing a big jamboree. They've asked me several times, so we just need to talk about that separately. In, in Bob's defense, we've had a couple of good ideas about how to spiff this up uh, to make it appropriate for the for the time, like the like the green fountain and the green beer and Guinness and whatever. So, those of you who have some ideas about this, I would love for you to get together and work on this and save Bob from having to run around, Bob and Richard and and. Robert, if he ever makes it back to the United States, um, to save to save a little bit of load on them. If we could have a subcommittee or some folks who are interested in helping to spiff this up a little bit, to take the load off of these folks, because they do so much otherwise. I'm I'm concerned about loading them up with, with some other stuff. So if you've got some connections, if you've got some ideas, I know this is risky what I'm what I'm doing right now because I may stifle ideas. Well, I'm just going to keep my mouth shut. Or I'm going to volunteer. We know from service days what it's like to open up your mouth, right, guys? Um, so, uh, but but really and truly, if, if uh, we had a couple good ideas, if, if a company could take the lead, check with the rental place about a fountain, 
Uh, you, you've got a way to check with a beer distributor or something. You know, beer distributor. Help, help take the load off of these fellows. I'll have to go step up to in, do in that. That's back. their deal. Yeah. Okay. And and let me know. Let me know if, what you, what you've got in the way of ideas. For I hate to give up the mill because they're only charging us fifteen hundred dollars. And I've got a check for two hundred dollars that I forgot. Oh, I gave it to you. Right. I was going to say we got two hundred dollar refund. We got a two hundred dollar refund again from the mail. For Even after that, even the shoes for just picking up after ourselves. So it actually, net net was thirteen hundred dollars for the night, which is ridiculous. We could even do instead of marking our main, we could keep it there and do a jazz night there. Right. Cool. I don't, I don't want to lose focus on, on this. Lot of things moving forward. Sure. On, on this sure. event and. And pronto, you're right, we've got to make a decision about it. We do quickly, uh, very quickly. Yep. I noticed also on the posters, I mentioned that it doesn't say where the money's going to. It never does, yeah, because that kind of, <clears throat> we've kind of shied away from that because well, it doesn't I'm, really go for Yeah, and, 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 and don't I, focus. Well, the, re the reason I asked that is because when I got all those donations, that was the first thing they asked me. Where is the money going to? And it wasn't on the poster. I finally got Kenny to do a digital one for me, and then I sent sure. out that digital one yeah. to him. But but that's that's what they always ask me. That's what's what, the money going to? That's what Bobby and I always tell them when we greet him at the top of the stairs to take some more money from the 50 50. <laughs> we're always telling them money goes for scholarships. Yep. Yeah. 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 Gotta be careful about that. Okay. I would suggest Bob that Tar Heel Wealth, and this is down the road, be invited to our end of year meal when we when we Steve brings these kids in. So this major sponsor who has consistently given thousands of dollars yeah. knows this is what here meet this child meet and maybe this spend a hundred dollars on a nice plaque this year for them yeah and they because if they put thousands them. in they yeah. Yeah, I mean Those are good when ideas. you personalize it <clears throat> that makes a difference yeah Mike Robbins which was the senior in command has retired and uh, the young fella that, that was up and coming is now today. Footsteps, but he's the one that called me and said, We'll do three. So I feel good about moving forward. Um, so anyway, we'll, we'll just keep plugging forward. Um, next item of business is just to remind the club that there are expenses throughout the year for your, your president, your vice president, and your president nominee for going to events that we have traditionally uh, covered uh, registration. Uh, and, and associated expenses for that. For instance, Donald has pre-pets. Has pre-pets happened yet? No. You, Donald pre pre pre, pre. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Well, yeah. Oh, pre, yeah. Pre, yeah. Yeah. Pre, pre. That's right. So, so Donald had Donald has at least two out of town things to, to go to. Uh, pre-pets and and pets. Pets is president elect training seminar. I guess is the is. Um, so just to remind you that that we will be spending some. Uh, some funds on that. Traditionally, the club has um, has helped defray the cost for um, president and or president elect to go to a convention if it's nearby, like when it was in in Atlanta. You all paid as I was president elect. You paid my registration fee for Atlanta, and and I would suggest that that if if Donald's is going to do Toronto, that, that we would do that for him as well. And district conference. District conference. Don't forget, district conference is coming up April the. 29th. I've got the 27th through the 29th. Is that yes. correct? Did I get those dates right? Yes. Um, and that's that's uh, uh, going to be uh, once 26 again. 26 through 29. Once again, they're in, in eastern Tennessee, somewhere near Sevierville or Kingsport. Yeah, Kingsport. Um, and uh, so just keep that in mind as well. Uh, Bob, 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 poor Bob has to talk again. Bob wants to talk about the water filter situation. Yeah, this guy did a presentation about John six, eight weeks ago, correct? And he's got most of the Rotary Clubs in the Taba County to put forth some money for his effort. And they're in um, Puerto Rico right now. We don't have a request with funds to major that. concerns. But this is on uh, Rotary's hot sheet for this year is water, water concerns. And this filter, which cost them when they buy them in mass quantities, it's $25 a piece, but it's amazing. For those that were here, the day he did a presentation where he took the water from Lake Hickory and brought it in in a bucket and filtered it through here and it came out clean and drank it along with Phil Trick. And Phil's still here. Um, it's a lot to be said, but I've watched several videos and it takes dirty water and turns it clean. Oh, yeah. A 
what was it down to? How many microns? Bill? It, it's it's down to the down to the micron level where it gets it gets any any uh, uh, contaminant other than uh, viral contaminants. Do you any bacterial or anything? Say again. You, you do have to back flush. You have to back flush. There's a yes. back flushing procedure that works quite yeah. well, but it takes out bacteria and protozoa and and other little nasty things, Giardia and that kind of stuff that's in the water. It's pretty neat. Mm -hmm. um, pretty neat along with just there. getting rid of the the, uh, the particulate contaminants, it just makes the water taste nasty. So as long as you can find a source of water, whether it be a puddle of water, probably run it through here, uh, sterilize it, you're good to go. Yeah. I think that uh, Filtrate would be a great brand name. <laughs> that's right, that's right. He, he's asked for anything that the club would. Well, he you have a proposal? Yeah, uh, he, has, he really asked for $500, but I was afraid to ask the club for that much money. But it is on Rotary's hot sheet this year, and I know that the other clubs have given. I don't know what they've given. How many but, gallons of water do they say that one of those would filter? Oh, is it better. some for six months for a family? It, it, it depends on, on how dirty the water is before you back flush it, but uh, it's, it's hundreds and hundreds of gallons typically for typical water before you even need to back flush it, and then it's good to go again. Um, and how do you tell when it's no the water, longer? The water flow just decreases down very low. And so, so you go online, there's a video of Africa. That's the number one bottle of water in Africa is that name brand right now that they rebottle it to sell it uh, to the general public. So it's making its way across the world. And so what, what will the money go to? He's specifically, specifically working filters. on uh, Puerto Rico right now. Okay and he's made several trips over there, so he specifically takes the money. John Ellis, a um, little background, lived in our community for many, many years. His wife passed. Uh, he, he, he met another woman, moved on to Charlotte, and that's where he's housed out of now. So, but he, he's so tightly knit in our community, he figured that would be the easiest place to start. And as soon as you take a look at his presentation, I mean, it's a no-brainer. It's just, and uh, he, he takes you through videos he'll send back to the club what he did with the money, how he dispersed it in Puerto Rico, and... So you you want to make a motion that... Correct. Yes, uh, my motion is uh -huh. to offer uh, his organization $500 so we can be part of the uh, water issue for Rotary International. We have a second on that. Second. Okay, good. So. So now, as you all as you all remember, now we, we now have a, a good solid procedure in place. What what we'll do is um, is is uh, what's we do not need to vote on it yet, do we? Because no, now we wait for the no, we wait for the committee. It goes to the committee. So the committee, committee will make a recommendation yes. to the club yeah. by next week. Yeah, by next week. Right. Yeah. Bob, how much are those? Twenty-five dollars. But the more they buy, the more buy they get. Yeah. Oh, it is a great buy. And I, I was in Puerto Rico two weeks ago. Ugh. And, um, it's horrible, they say. Yeah, San, old San Juan is, they're getting back, okay? Uh, I went to a restaurant and the guy said, the restaurant's only been open for two weeks. Mm -hmm. Cruise ships are just now getting back, but at least almost half the island is still without power mm -hmm. yeah. and, and water. And, and water is a big, big, big issue there. I, I can't stress that enough. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'll get together with you so that you can fill out the form. Yeah, whoever, whoever the committee is, just keep that filter so you guys can talk about it. He just handed me the filter. Does they work with salt water too? Uh, I think so. Yes, after you send it through, then you sterilize it, you're good to go. Uh, pretty sure. Okay, I don't yeah, know. I don't know that um, Okay, so um, I forgot now who all else talked to me that wanted some time. I, I, I got coming. Well, I got two minutes. Okay. Yeah. okay. I got okay. Two, two quick things here. Um, the scholarship um, that we do for, for the kids at CBCC, Teresa Beeks had asked for um, what we're looking for, what kind of criteria. I sent her everything we used to use when we were making the decision, so she has uh, that information. Um, there's a polio group of actual polio survivors that meets once a month. Um, there's a Rotarian in another club who meets with them, and he's interested in uh, whether or not we want to uh, be involved. I told him I would be the liaison for the polio. I will attend those particular meetings. He did ask, he knows, he's well aware that we, our club, wants to do something on the site of the old hospital 
um, and he mentioned about other clubs getting involved, and I said, I didn't mind, but I don't want to lose our identity in the middle of everything, which was our idea to start with. And he understood that, that completely. But he just wants to know that we want to be involved in polio efforts, and I told him on behalf of Phil and everybody else, I said yes. Well, in that we'll regard, that. Phil's been approached by uh, Cliff, Moon, Cliff Moon about a mural downtown. And, yeah, that's uh, what I'm talking about that. If if we want to do that, uh, there is a there is a muralist group it used to be uh, gang taggers that have become very well accomplished muralists. And if, if we get to the point where that wants to be real, I wouldn't mind reaching out to them and see if they want to provide an artist to do the work. Okay. Treasurer. Yeah, just a couple minutes. I'm sending around a statement that shows how much we had in the bank as of 7.30 p.m. last night. It should still be there. Uh, <laughs> And then I'm also sending around November reports with attached supporting documents. So if you have any questions, take a look at that as it goes around. That's where we are. We're in great financial condition. Uh, just a couple things. Check your email. You should have gotten a receipt from Paul Harris. I tried to get that in by the end of the year so you could get a 2017 deduction. We I think on that. So you got that. Check your email. How much should that be for? It's minimum one hundred dollars. It should be. But I think one hundred dollars total for the year. But right. Get two. I just infused with a different type of action. Sure, if one was a duplicate, I've got two. I've got one from May, which is a letter, yeah. and then I've got yeah. one that which is a definite tax receipt at the end. So they both count. Kind of, okay. Right. And, 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 for, and, and any of us who participate, because I got to give a pitch for the program. There is a program called Rotary Direct, where you can have a sum allocated from checking credit, whatever, every month, and that accrues just like the money we provide through the club to the, the foundation. And so some of us will have two uh, tax uh, notifications from RI, because uh, like we, I think Jim does and I do, we give like at least $10 a month uh, through Rotary Direct. And just for the benefit of Joe, and I'm not sure if he understood what Paul Harris is briefly, did, did you, uh, do you understand why you're getting that receipt and what this is for? I just put the new brand being new here. So. This is a donation to the foundation, which, you know, uh, does all the international type things like the water program and a lot of educational programs all around the world. Once you've donated a thousand dollars, you're going to the ball here. So, yeah, that, that, that now also I've been invoiced for our uh, uh, member dues from uh, uh, district. district, so I'll be paying that with any by the 31st of January. Uh, also, uh, the uh, invoices will be coming out. I'm a little behind on that. I've got to pay the second quarter of our, what we have budgeted for CART, and I want to make sure we need to kick up and getting card donations to make sure we meet what we said we would budget for card. What I did is divide up into the four quarters and I'll send them at the end of every quarter one fourth of what we budgeted. Does that make sense? So yeah, we, yeah. We, we'll wanna, we, we have money to cover that, but we need to <coughs> allocate it to yeah. make sure we, if we're going to call the anyway. So um, yeah, I'll pay the it. deposit to Moretz. Every time I talk to him, he's like, I'm not worried about you guys. You always pay. So for the dance, the, the half down for that. And then, um, the, uh, basically any questions about anything. I had two, the Golden Corral, I want to make sure we get the $500 presented. I present Kenny's bird dog and that, that we approved for yes, the, that's okay. right. And then secondly, the grant thing that we deferred that we were supposed to be involved with would involve us paying some money and getting money back. You follow me? That's yes. for, that for a district grant is I just still effect. Sure we will pay fifteen hundred dollars to rise against hunger when we close out the grant with the pictures of us doing it and the check that we sent picture we'll get 750 back right i just want to make sure i've still got that on the radar yes. y'all yes. help remind yeah. me that when i need to do something that right. i do it right. in a timely manner so that's sure. all if you have no questions i'll answer rick's got one more thing and then we're going real quick please 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 read the updates uh, I'm sure hopefully you are, but I'm going to put something in there about an upcoming retreat for us. Ah, okay, good deal. Okay, Bob, Bob, have you got a list of the, uh, uh, who's got the program next week? 
You got anybody got that in front of them? Uh, uh, while Rick looks that up, Bob wanted to do a plug, I, uh, membership plug for my. Thing. We're running short on time, so I, take it yeah, off. I uh, apologize. I have not done a thing for Rotary in more than a week because I have been ready in my daughter's house to be lived in again. Uh, but in that regard, I will get out the fellowship and, and uh, action group uh, information to those I think that might find it relevant. Uh, does any of us do any, does anyone here have a relationship with Alex Lee Corporation? MDI. If, if Alex Lee, specifically, because if you remember when Jenny came in, uh, Dr. White, uh, the person who actually brought her in was Kevin Boyle, who's with Alex Lee. And he was transferring from a club over in uh, above Statesville, north of Statesville. Uh, and we couldn't get enough information on him, and by that time his, his ardor waned. And if anybody has a contact with Alex Lee, I'd like to approach Kevin Boyle again about renewing his I, interest I would in go, membership. I'll go directly to Jenny if I were you. She would probably okay. tell you how to well, get a hold of her. He, he found her by prior relationship. <clears throat> and I don't think they had a friendship relationship before that. It was just an acquaintanceship. Uh, and he knew she was in the, I'll try. Uh, Duke, you gonna approach him? We're down to membership. Ask a friend, bring a friend, get a friend. We got to, we've got to get that number up to 30, guys, and it's, it's not going to happen by, gee, we ought to take the brick. That's a bunch of stuff. Uh, it's, Donald, come on with me to the meeting. That's the way you're going to get them here. Treat them to breakfast, whatever, but let's, let's get busy because we're not going to, in three months' time, we're not going to get three, four, five new members without a direct positive effort to do so. So what happened to Kevin Bullock? He, his, his work suddenly started commanding more of his time, and he also got into a conflict with, with could he get up this early and get it done. So we need, we need, we need to, to, to find those people that identify with us and bring them in. For sure. I'll tell you what, I can, I can get through Alex Lee. I'm going to get there. Yeah, yeah, he's there. Yeah, He's been there. Okay, I'll do Kevin North. I'll contact Kevin North. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Now, who has someone they can invite next week? Come on, guys. Somebody's got to have someone they can invite next week to come to the meeting. Uh, we'll yeah. think about it and let you know. Yeah. All, 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 my, all my friends are in this room. <laughs> That's a sad commentary. <laughs> <laughs> I got friends in little places. Well, I, 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 I have inherited the brick, apparently. Anybody oh. with anybody well, with Austin me? brought the brick back. I know. It didn't get passed. It, it just it just got passed to me. So. Oh, okay, excellent. Yeah. So, so we'll expect to see your it's, candidates. It's, it's on me now. Um, Bob, Steiger. Well, the. Um, the uh, young lad in our community that I talked about uh, a month and a half ago, that his, his last name's White, his first name just is, uh, I just can't think of it right now, but he has made it to the finals of America's Got Talent. Uh, really? He is uh, doing a commercial live now with Lionel Richie, on, and it's hit all the airwaves in, in lieu of March, where he, co where he goes live, so he will be with the stars. Um, if anything, and the reason I say this is because some of the clubs have, have, have helped him out a little bit. If anything can ever, ever happen bad to an 18-year-old, it's happened to this fella. And despite all that, he's pushed past that. He's made it this far with Alan and Jackie Finley's help and has made it to uh, see the stars. And it looks like he's going to go uh, quite some distance with America's Got Talent. So. Uh, Alan may decide to come to the club and, and talk about that a little bit more, but I just want to let you all know when you see the commercial and to see the young fellow singing with Lionel Richie, that is Catawba County. Cool. Cool. Is, it, uh, is it on TV yet? Uh, March. March is one of theirs. It starts, so. starts in March. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right, we're out of time. There's nothing else, so here we go. Oh, the things we think, think say or do, it isn't it the truth, it's a fair all concerned. Will it build goodwill and better friendships? 
Will it be beneficial to all concerned? We got that. That would be a good place to put one. Is that that? Uh, uh, McCloskey, is that the one? Uh, uh, I would think you got it. Great. Great. Yes. Um, yeah. 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 Now you want to take it to him? Push right. Okay, you got one. Yeah. 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 Yeah.